Welcome to the October 24th, 2023 City Council meeting. Please stand for the invocation by Vice Mayor Feraldi, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Lord, I come to you tonight asking for wisdom and guidance as we conduct the business of your people. And Lord, I do lift up the nation of Israel and this is trying time um, beyond any, uh, beyond anything that I think any, any of us have seen in our lifetimes. I do pray for peace. I pray for your peace. And I thank you for who you are. And it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tonight we have a special recognition by the Military Order of the World Wars or MOWW, National Public Safety Law and Order Awards. Commander Peter Bryan from the Virginia Piedmont chapter will now come up to make the presentation. And anyone else that would like to come with them. Sure, go ahead. You can turn it on. Mike Reeves, he's the former commander and these were granted under his uh, administration, so I will ask Mike to actually deliver the awards. My name is Mike Reeves, I'm the uh, immediate. Gives you, something, uh, gives you something to put something on there. Okay. There you go, look at that. No. Right. There you go. There you go. My name is Mike Reeves, I'm the immediate past commander of the Virginia Piedmont chapter. Military Order of the World Wars, which is headquartered here in Lynchburg. And um, with me is Peter Bryan, as he just said. He is the current commander, uh, elected uh, just a couple of months ago. And uh, also with us tonight is the National Historian General for the Military Order of the World Wars, uh, our own uh, former Chief Police of Lynchburg, Chuck Bennett. So it's an honor to be here tonight. Oh, and, with, and also with us tonight is, is Mark Day and Barbara. Other associates are our, our chapter. We're very glad to have everybody here tonight. Thank you for the turnout. Um, it is a, a special honor for us tonight as a chapter because at the National Convention in Annapolis in August, our chapter had two nominees selected for prestigious National Exceptional Law and Order service awards. And so at this time, I'd like to ask uh, Chief Sudema and Chief Wormser to come forward to receive these awards. Okay, let me read these. Uh, the Exceptional Law and Order Service Award is presented to Chief Greg Wormser. Lynchburg Fire Department in Virginia for exceptional duty performance in keeping with the highest traditions of public service. Chief, congratulations. And also the Exceptional Law and Order Service Award presented to Chief Ryan Zudema, Lynchburg Police Department Lynchburg, Virginia, for exceptional duty, performance, and keeping with the highest traditions of, the, of public service. Chief, thank you very much. Thank you so much. What a wonderful way to start our evening. Okay, moving on to our public hearing. Tonight's City Council agenda is divided into three sections, public hearing, public comment, and general business. The first section is public hearings. This section includes all public hearings um, as required by law uh, or as council may direct. 
procedure. Staff will make a presentation. Comments will then be solicited from the public. An individual speaker shall have three minutes to speak. If the speaker represents a group, the speaker shall have five minutes. A speaker representing a group shall identify that group at the beginning of his or her remarks, and a group may have only one spokesperson. Each speaker shall clearly state his or her name and locality of residence. Upon the conclusion of public comments, the public hearing will be closed and the matter referred to counsel for deliberation. Consideration of adopting an ordinance repealing taxicab re regulations as provided in Article 2 of Chapter 37 and Article 4 of Chapter 2 of the Lynchburg City Code. Staff will provide a brief summary of the request. Mr. Kent White. Good evening, Madam Mayor, Good Mr. Evening. Vice Mayor, members of City Council. At your September 26 work session, uh, City Council directed staff to prepare amendments to City Code to remove provisions that set the rate for taxicabs. Uh, although a public hearing is not required to um, to remove any to repeal any requirements of this ordinance, council requested one this evening to hear from the community about changing this ordinance. So during your work session, there was some additional discussion about repealing sections beyond the rates. Uh, there was uh, um, none were identified specifically, and then there were uh, there was also discussion about uh, leaving the ordinance intact. So with that, staff has prepared two options for your consideration this evening. Option one repeals the entire ordinance, including ancillary sections of city code that speak specifically to background checks for drivers. And then option two repeals just the rates section of, of the taxicab ordinance itself. Um, if we missed the mark or didn't capture everything, then um, a couple things, uh, you can choose not to act at all or following your discussion, you can table it and provide us with additional direction and we'd be happy to, to bring back um, those additional provisions. And staff's recommendation in all of this is if you do repeal anything beyond the rates itself that you maintain the provisions for registration, uh, driver checks and other safety components. Uh, with that, following your public hearing, uh, staff's available to answer any questions you have. Okay, thank you so much. Is there anyone here who would like to speak in favor of repealing the taxi cab regulations? Anyone here who would like to speak in opposition? I'm here on behalf of local taxi drivers. First, I'll say rest in peace to ally cab driver number two, passed away on yesterday. <clears throat> also, rest in peace to a valuable, loyal, long-term customer who also passed away on yesterday. It's Byron Jennings and Ray Charles Penix. First, I'd like to thank council for actually holding a public hearing because you didn't have to. And I'd also like to say, although you don't have to, Code of Virginia Title 46.2, Subtitle 5, Chapter 20, Article 3, Section 2062 states, I'll summarize that the governing, governing body of the city may, by ordinance, regulate the rates or charges of taxi cabs and may prescribe such reasonable regulations. Are they using the lawful definition of may or what we assume it to mean? Attorney Friedman can answer. Council's mission to remind everyone to deliver services to city residents workers and visitors shout out to the lynchburg airport the roanoke airport the counties that surround lynchburg <clears throat> for using local taxi companies in an efficient effective and equitable manner and to build a stronger community thank you to all the customers who call local taxi companies such as allied cab gray top cab Hill City Cab, Lynchburg Cab, Yellow Cab, Q's Cab, and all others who may not be known. 
In the Lynchburg City Charter, Chapter 6, Section 38, 18th paragraph, in expressing the City Council powers and duties, one of those is to regulate the transportation of all articles through the streets of the city. Thankfully, so far, that has helped because when the Lynchburg Police Department or Lynchburg Hospitals call, the first thing they ask is how much is. The senior citizens and those who are below the federal poverty line call and ask if they don't already know because all of the loyal ones already know, even with the increase that happened recently. They know that when you get in, it's 380 when you hit the meter and it's 253 per mile. We have competition amongst all of the cab companies, but the competition is not based on price. That sets the playing field level. <clears throat> Maybe you don't want to regulate. Perhaps you could cap the fares. Again, as I stated two weeks ago, no, I don't think government should have their hands in all private business unless they're offering a public service. We compete based on merit, quality of being particularly good or worthy. We also compete on excellence, the quality of being outstanding or extremely good. We compete on availability and opportunity and time of day, time of night, the rate stays the same. We're not a ride sharing company, so they may have different or no regulation by the city. I would encourage you all to talk about this, listen to people who may know, and I don't know, make a good decision for the citizens of Lynchburg. Have a good evening. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in opposition? Anyone else to speak in opposition? Okay, any voicemails from citizens? Public hearing is now closed and the matter rests with council. Any discussion? We didn't have an opportunity for people to speak in favor. I, I, I offer that first. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Yeah. Councilman Huxon. I'm, I'm thankful for what Kent White put up is, and that is having two options. And I like option two where, because so many times and I've been here over the last 19 years, every once in a while something comes up. And nobody thinks, well, what's the price? What price should we set the cab rates? And I remember years ago, I asked Kim Payne, and he said, I have no idea. I have, and you were here. You're the only one that was here, I guess. Um, and he said, I have no idea why we do this. But we do it. Um, I think this is a much better way because it's still a lot, uh, option two gives our, our police the ability to still inspect to make sure the vehicles are safe and the safety elements. But option two now allows for the ability to set the, a private business to set their rates. Some people may raise the rates. I doubt it. I think what they feared was that people will lower the rates. And who benefits from lower rates? Customers wanting to get a ride. So I'll, I'll make a motion for option two and as, as Mr. White presented. Second. And I have nothing else to add, Madam Mayor. Okay, thank you. Um, do you want to speak to your second, Council Missions? I don't have anything else to add. Okay. Any further discussion on option, uh, the motion that was made by Councilman Haggison for option two? Can, can we put the options, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Dr. Walter. Can we put the options on board? <clears throat> um, Basically, what I've, what I've heard from the, the cab taxi drivers is that they like the reg, leg, leg, regulation the way it is, and they didn't want any changes. Um, that's what I was getting from, from the taxi cab driver. I didn't think they wanted anything changed. So that's why I was voting against the motion, because I would recommend it stays the same the way it was. Thank you. Okay. okay. Councilman Dolan. Oh, I'm just really conflicted on this, um, because I, I, I heard all the drivers when they came here, and I understand all that, but I also really believe in free market. And I think that there are, as uh, Kimberly just outlined, there are other ways they can compete. So I think that, um, 
I would support probably option two for that reason. Yes, I think the young lady made her point real clear. And there are other cab drivers, operators in here. And I think if they were in opposition to their affairs as is, the way they operate their cabs as is, they, they would voice their opinion. So, so I have to stay with Kilman. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and vote on the motion on the floor, which is to um, go with option two. The motion passes four three. Okay, the next section is public comment. During public comment, individual speakers have three minutes to speak and those representing a group have five minutes to speak. Typically, City Council takes comments made during the public comment section of the agenda under advisement and may refer concerns to the City Manager for follow-up. Citizens often express conflicting and diverse positions regarding specific issues under consideration. To encourage citizen participation and to avoid intimidation to persons who may express sometimes unpopular opinions, applause, cheers or jeers from the audience are not permitted. When appearing before city council, citizens may not engage in behavior that intimidates or insults others, engage in disruptive behavior, use profanity or vulgar language, promote private business ventures, or campaign for office. We will now hear from a citizen regarding not closing Sandusky Elementary School, Lisa Geary or Jerry? I'm sorry if I said it wrong. I guess she's not here. Okay, uh, we will now hear from a citizen regarding housing. Sheree Kemper or Sherry Kemper? Is it Sheree? It's Sheree. Okay. Okay, hello everyone. Um, I wanted to bring to everyone's, I guess, knowledge the housing situation that we have going on in Lynchburg. Um, most of the time, Housing is based on your income if you're able to go through housing authority. But those who don't, you go to these rental places and they jacked up the places on apartments. And a lot of the times the requirement is that the person makes three times or three and a half times the rent. Well, we live in Lynchburg, Virginia. Normally one household, income household, does not make three times the rent. So it makes it that much harder to find a home. Um, from May of this year until mid-September, I was without a home. And it wasn't because of credit, it wasn't because of money, it's because I didn't make over three times the rent. When a rent is over $800 a month already for one person, that's very hard to do. I feel like that requirement needs to be adjusted. To me, a 3.5 or three times more than the rent is for a two income household, not one. And it's not so much it's you know, a single parent, it's a single person, period. Every year we have kids graduating. Every year we have kids wanting to move out. A lot of them can't move, move, afford to move out on their own, so they have to get roommates. And it's because of that statute that they need to make three times the rent. I think that needs to be adjusted. There are also a lot of vacant homes in our cities. And some of them are not that run down, and it doesn't take much to fix them up. I feel like the city should take and fix those places up and rent those out to people that need it. Um, I actually took a time and spent some time at the Salvation Army, and there were families there, a woman with two or three children. And I'm like, if anybody deserves a home in this city, it would be her. Now, everybody's situation is different. People lose jobs, the loved ones may pass away, the person that was taking care of the bills. There's a lot of different situations why people are in that. But that is one of the biggest things that I feel in Lynchburg that is definitely a problem. They had new apartments coming up and they automatically say students only. Well, what about everybody else? So I think that's something that needs to be looked at and addressed and if it can be adjusted, it would be a big help to the community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, we will now hear from a group representative regarding the role of media in politics, Gary Taylor from Citizens for a Better Lynchburg.
Good evening, distinguished Mayor Reed, Mr. Vice Mayor, City Council members, and professional and competent and committed entire city staff. My name is Gary Taylor. I represent Citizens for a Better Lynchburg. I currently reside in Goode, Virginia. Tonight's topic is regarding the media and its role in politics. Unfortunately, we don't have quite as much media as uh, Vice Mayor Feraldi had at his town hall meeting last week, uh, but I would like to address that. I don't have no problem with him having a town hall. That's, it. That's his right and stuff. And there was plenty of media there. But I'm not sure that the full story gets out when uh, a lot of misinformation is spread. So I would only ask that the media try to do a better job of incorporating the entire story. So an, uh, an example was Vice Mayor Feraldi's town hall. Perfectly legitimate uh, opportunity. Um, but I don't believe the entire story got told. So I'm not saying that's an indictment on our local media, and there's a lot of stuff going on, but we have to have facts and information available to all. When this doesn't happen, and they do things for clicks and hits, we get a lack of form of accountability for people that can say whatever they want to. And this just emboldens bad actors to continue to do what they do. And this is very uh, hurtful to our city when we don't get the full story. So I'd like to give a couple more examples. One is Council Member Mischin's recent attack on the port camera voluntary police grant that he referred to as a state operation that he would not support, only to be forced to change this false narrative when WLNI actually played the tape, unedited, of Council Member Mischins voting unanimously to support that grant. So I'm not sure which way he lands on that. Another Council Member Mischins example is the unedited YouTube video of the harassment of city employee John Hughes. Why is that not on every media website in the city of Lynchburg? Is it not news? Do the citizens not know what our elected officials have a right to what our elected officials are doing when they're not up here? So that led for Mr. Hughes to resign. It's probably going to potentially be a lawsuit against the city. We have to have transparency, but we also have to have accuracy in reporting. And if we only get one part of the story, the citizens and all of us in Lynchburg are not given opportunity to fairly and objectively evaluate what we're being told. It's a big issue. And again, it's not a local media issue. And in closing, I just want to bring up the most current example, which is on Reddit, and where apparently council member missions is trying to hire a young college liberty student to do a hit job on the vice mayor. Why is this not in the media? Is there a cover-up going on or something? Or are these people being controlled by certain people? So what is the answer? We don't really know. But we should be able to get the entire truth, not what the de media determines we should hear. So all, all my group is looking at is what's best for all Lynchburg. Tell us the truth and let us decide. But we're not getting the truth. And in a lot of cases, we're getting a very bad version of it. But go on Reddit for the citizens, for the media. Do your job and report everything. 
I don't know how this person's still on the city council. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will now hear from a citizen regarding community concerns regarding council behavior and what it's doing to tarnish the name of our beautiful city, Kathleen Davis. Good evening, council members Taylor, Reed, Hegelson, Dolan, and Wilder. Tonight, I would like to address the six of you and express an emergency community concern about the safety of our local officials, mental health and well-being of our city employees, and the sheer exhaustion private citizens from both sides of the aisle are experiencing following the drama created by your colleague. Because there are many failures and dramatic stunts to choose from, I'll just pick the most recent and the most concerning. As you all know, your colleague solicited a young college student asking him to perform a hitman of sorts as a hitman of sorts in, of sorts in order to endanger and to sabotage council member Feraldi, all while potentially compromising the character of a young person whose parents entrusted our city to be a place where that young person became an adult. Sorry to make you yawn, Jeff. Um, all while potentially endangering this child's character who's supposed to be becoming a young adult. I, along with the public, read the email exchange, read the email exchange online where Mayor Reed was trying to hold your colleague accountable, to which he replied with some alarming falsehoods, lies, and most importantly, he did not deny a second of it. How is it legal and how can you all just sit there charged with protecting the city when you can't even keep us safe from your colleague who you know is escalating in his dangerous behavior? This college student had the courage to come forward so that you all might all have the courage to take his seat. This sort of behavior undermines the city's ability to hire and retain talented, hardworking employees. This sort of behavior doesn't encourage citizens to get involved in local government, and the headlines about his antics make our city a punchline. In our city, uh, if, if our city council is a joke, why will businesses choose Lynchburg to grow in? So, Council Member Feraldi, if you want bold tax relief, bold tax relief looks like freeing Litchburg citizens from having to pay the salary to a man who has spent almost a year um, getting paid cash money to get zero accomplished, all while suing the city for a million dollars. Council Members Hegelson and Taylor, if you think the city needs discipline, start by disciplining this council member who tried to hire a local college student to do a heinous act, created a weird bullet laptop situation, stood and smiled as one of the best employees to ever work for this city was aggressively harassed by Marty's bestie, and so much more. If this council cannot formally censure or completely oust this ticking time bomb from his seat tonight or in the near future, then I would ask that you take a big pause on telling private citizens how to run our lives. Because the call is coming from inside the house. Thank you. Moving on to general business. This section includes general items of new business. Consideration of introducing a resolution amending the fiscal year 2024 city, federal, state aid fund budget and appropriate appropriating $47,138 to purchase law enforcement equipment for the Lynchburg Police Department and technology equipment for the Lynchburg Sheriff's Office and the Office of the Commonwealth's Attorney. This item went to our Finance Committee today, October 24th, 2023, and I will defer to the Chair of that committee, Vice Mayor Feraldi. Thank you, Madam Mayor. As you noted, this did go to the Finance Committee. It did pass unanimously for recommendation in Council, and I do so move. Okay, this item does not require a second. Is there any discussion? Uh, not unless the Chief had anything he wanted to offer. I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Okay, let's go ahead and vote. The motion passes 7 0. Great. Consideration of introducing a resolution amending the fiscal year 2024 city federal state aid fund budget to appropriate $25,800 to facilitate speed enforcement activities. This item went to our finance committee today, October 24th, 2023, and I will defer to the chair of that committee, Vice Mayor Feraldi. Again, thank you, Madam Mayor. The same as before, uh, did pass unanimously from the finance committee. I do so move. Okay, does not require a second. Any discussion? No. Okay, please cast your vote. Motion passes 7 0. Okay. Consideration of introducing a resolution amending the fiscal year 2024 city federal state aid fund budget and appropriating $26,400 to facilitate selective enforcement activi activities and equipment and training. This item went to our finance committee today, October 24th, 2023, and I will defer to the chair of that committee, Vice Mayor Feraldi. Ditto. 
Okay. Any discussion? No? Okay. So moved. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> okay. Let's vote. The motion passes 7 0. All right. Consideration of introducing a resolution amending the fiscal year 2024 city, federal, state aid fund budget and appropriating $55,618 for the purchase of 56 replacement bulletproof vests for law enforcement officers. This item went to our finance committee today, October 24, <coughs> 2023, and I will defer to the chair of that committee, Vice Mayor Feraldi. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Finally, this did uh, pass unanimously. I do so move in speaking to it. Chief, thank you for as a, uh, finding creative ways to find funding and, and provide support to our our men and women on, out on the street. So I, I do thank you for that. Okay, does not require a second. Any discussion from anyone else? Okay, go ahead, vote please. The motion passes 7 0. Okay, item number 11 on the agenda was pulled by the petitioner since the uh, earlier work session. So we will move on to item number 12 which is consideration of adopting a resolution approving the 2024 legislative agenda for the city of Lynchburg. Is there any discussion on the legislative agenda? Uh, Vice Mayor Feraldi. I move adoption. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? Uh, go, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Speak to your motion. No. No? 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 Okay. Council Missions. I'd like to offer a substitute motion to adopt the uh, agenda excuse me, to adopt the agenda with an amendment under the education section that COL supports legislation that would promote school choice for parents and their children. This should be accomplished through uh, legislation that would allow the education dollars to follow the child to the public, private, or faith-based school of the parent's choice. Um, do you want to speak to the second? Yeah. Go ahead. Well, this is intended to be helpful. Um, if it is uh, possible, I, I think this would be an item that should be voted on individually by the council prior to inserting it into the agenda, but that's just what I wanted to offer uh, as a whole. That'd be fine. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm willing to withdraw my motion and, and take that up. Um, okay, so let's draw the motion to approve and we will just speak to this now. Um, so I'll make a motion that that is um, that the agenda is or the legislative agenda is amended with that amendment. So that's the motion now. Since he withdrew his motion, so it's not a substitute motion anymore. I'm making a motion that we amend the legislative agenda with language that COL supports school legislation choice. that would promote school choice for parents and their children. This will be accomplished through initiatives and or legislation that would allow education dollars to follow the child to the public, private, or faith-based school of the parents' choice. Because okay, so it would be an addition to the... In, in the education section. Right, okay. Okay, so you made the motion to add that. You're gonna second that. Yep. Do you wanna speak to your second? Yes, and, and so with that, it's interesting, just yesterday on the news, they had polling done that like over 70 some percent of all people, not party, but all people recognize that the choice for education should be left to the parents. And with that choice, the school choice, what you you typically see is improvements. Um, you know, we look at the choice that we have in second, you know, in college education, we have some of the best in the world. We don't have that choice with public education in Virginia and other places in the country. And meanwhile, we're 24th in mathematics, and we're 19th in reading, and you know these kind of things. And in Lynchburg, if there is the ability to have uh, parents can decide if their school is not teaching for their child, they can go elsewhere. And I think school choice has been a very resounding success in many places that it's been tried. And hopefully, our, our state legislature. Uh, well, local delegation will push it, and hopefully with uh, Winsome Sears, our lieutenant governor has been pushing this. Many organizations who recognize the benefits uh, for the student, for the child, for the family, uh, and, and adding school choice as an option on here for, our, uh, I think, is a winning message, too. Okay. Anyone else? 
Dr. Wiley? Yeah, I, I do not support that motion. Um, first of all, just the first I've heard of it. Um, I'm not in favor of school choice. Um, it's almost like funding schools, defunding police. I'm not in favor of those. I'm in favor of increasing the funds for our school system. Um, they have a desire to close some of our schools and, and take away some of the funds from our schools. The, the, the funds we gave our school system this year is decreased the amount from last year. I mean, we talk about different categories. I'm just telling you the bottom line is a decrease in funding for our schools. So if we talk about we love education, love our children, but we don't want to fund our schools, we have an urban school setting, it's going to be a little challenging in an urban school setting. Um, we need to support our school system, we need to support our teachers, we need to support our school board and fun totally funding their request for the school system. So I do not support the school choice that, the, uh, that they're recommending today. Thank you. Councilman Dolan. <coughs> I really feel this is another attempt to dismantle our public school system. People do have school choice. If you want to send your child to a, a private school, you can do so now. I just don't think that we should be taking taxpayer dollars to pay for private and or Christian schools for individuals. Um, I appreciate Councilwoman Dolan's comments. However, the vast majority of our citizens don't have the means that you have and cannot afford to send their children to private school or Christian school, and many would do it if they did. So uh, it's a very unfortunate position. Um, I'm here to represent all of Lynchburg. Um, doesn't matter if you know you have trouble finding housing or if you have a huge business and you're extremely successful, you should have a choice where your child goes to school that's the best fit for your family and the needs of your child, no matter where you live or what your situation is. Cosmo Hudson. And two, I think, <clears throat> you know, this is vastly different, you know, because some, and what we've seen for decades is the protection of the school system the public school system as opposed to the student. I mean, I think we, what I care about is making sure that the student gets the education. So many times we're, we're seeing this battle, it's between the public school system versus the student. Many times they're the same, sometimes they're different. Sometimes they're, they're, they're vastly different when you have the administration, like we've seen in Lynchburg, the bloat that has happened and when the administrative bloat happens, that means it's not beneficial for the student. And when you have parents that don't have the means, but now having some element of school choice, they can choose to send their kids elsewhere, whether it be a charter school, whether it be a private school, whether uh, it be in the county, they can now take those tax dollars, they don't have to take the money out of their pocket, they can use that that would normally go to the system and follow the child so the child can get a good education. <clears throat> I, I, I'm not one that's gonna support a system, a system that has actually taken us to the top in the whole world to 24th in mathematics. Is that a system that we wanna continue? You know, some of these systems need to be shaken up because it's for the benefit of the child for their education. I think school choice, it again, it's not just the poll that I just saw yesterday. It wasn't even a, a partisan issue. It is vast majority of people, rich, poor, middle income, recognize the benefit of having the choice in education being for the parents so the student can thrive and grow. And I hope we can support this. <clears throat> I know our, our local delegation will, so. Councilman Dolan. Uh, Councilmember Helgerson, you uh, quoted Benjamin Franklin earlier this evening, and now I will sort of summarize a quote that Con Thomas Jefferson made early in his life. And uh, was, he was very firm on believing that our very democracy hinges on the fact that we have public education for our entire community. And, and you have been against public education for as long as I've known you for 20 years on this dais anyway from everything I've read that you've purported in earlier times. So this, this clearly is an attempt to take money away from the schools and give it to private. I just can't, I can't support it. So, 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 I mean, when we're looking at supporting a system, in Lynchburg we got 12,500 school age kids in Lynchburg. 7,500 go to the free public school. 
to me that says it's not just me. It says that almost 40% of the parents with children in Lynchburg already are choosing to go elsewhere. They're choosing to pay their Lynchburg taxes and they're choosing to spend their money either separately in a private school, they're choosing to send their kids to a county school, they're choosing to homeschool, they're making that choice so this because is they because because they wreck but it's now uh, it, it's there's lots of people that can't afford that you have single parents that can't afford that they can't take the time to drive their children to uh, Campbell County schools or Bedford County or one of the neighboring county schools that may fit their child's learning environment better having the school choice gives parents and it, it emboldens them. I mean, when you look at the, the statistics that have happened uh, across the, the, the country where school choice has been adopted, you see things flourish. And again, maybe some people want to protect the status quo and protect the system. I want us to protect the student and I think school choice does that. And again, this is our legislative agenda. We kind of feel a certain way and obviously we may differ our delegation is going to be, you know, reading this uh, legislative agenda. Sometimes they read it. They've told me before. Most of the time they used to just pitch it. But maybe they'll read this. And so we're not going to uh, lose friendships over this where we disagree. But I think school choice is a, is a, is a, good, is a, good, is a good solution. So, uh, Council Mitchell, I'd like to go ahead and call the vote if that's okay. One is when you look at the spending in, in, in the, across the country, right? We are at the bottom in Virginia for school choice initiatives. Washington, D.C. is ranked number eight. Maine, Vermont, Arizona, Wisconsin, all above it. There are states that are blue, states that are red, states that are purple, <coughs> that are spending a significant amount more money on school choice. It works, it puts parents in control of their kids' education, and that's what matters. Okay, y'all ready to vote? Okay, so what, we're voting for the... We're voting just, to, the just to add it to the package. The school choice. Yeah, just to add it to the okay. agenda, yeah. Got it, thank you. The motion passes, back to... Vice Mayor Feroldi. I renew my motion to adopt the agenda. Okay, do I have a second? Do you want to still second the approval? Yeah, second. Okay. Any additional discussion on approving the entire agenda? Uh, additional discussion to now? I have none. Oh, no, nothing to you? No. And to you? I'm j just going to say, you know, obviously there's things on the agenda that I like, some things I don't like. And I'm going to be voting it for a package, but by me voting for this as a package, by no means says that I support everything on this thing. So. Okay. Get out. Get out. Okay. I'm not voting for the package, period. I'm, I'm not in favor of elected school boards. I'm definitely in favor of school choice. Um, there's other, a few, uh, those are the main areas that I'm not in favor of, so we'll be voting against this package. Thank you. Okay. Council Missions? I just wanted to echo the comments that Councilman Helgeson and Councilwoman Dolan made um, that uh, I think overall there's a lot of great things in this legislative agenda that I support. There's a couple things that I, that I, that I don't support, but I think that this is a good um, document that the seven of us put together. And I think that there's uh, some, some good things in here, and uh, I look forward to sending this to Richmond. I did want to thank uh, Mr. Benda and Ms. Brom for taking the initiative to put this together for us as we uh, sent you our revisions. Thank you. And just before we vote, I just want to let the, the public under, and who don't know the process here is not everything that's on here um, actually happens. This is just a proposal that goes to our state legislature le legislators and then it has to actually get carried through uh, the House and the Senate and a lot of it never actually goes to fruition. So this is just ideas that are looked at. So um, it's just things on paper right now that are considered. So just want to let you know that. Um, and let's go ahead and vote. The motion passes 6-1. 
Mr. Benda. Madam Mayor, I'm just at this moment here. I was gonna, uh, we've talked about it in the work session. Just wanted to highlight it for those that are tuning in and listening that um, the next meeting that we have is on the 14th. It'll be, uh, we're gonna have a legislative dinner. We've done it the last two years and your local delegation will be invited and um, uh, it should be a good, good, good event. Thank you very much. Okay, for our last agenda item, we will have our second reading of the consideration of adopting resolution R2388 to amend the fiscal year 24 general fund budget and appropriate up to $2,455,000 for the 12th Street stabilization. May I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Want to speak to your motion? Yeah. <gasps> She spoke for me on her, uh, I, I, <laughs> with this, as we looked at this, nobody likes spending money. I get it. The road, the, the wall's falling down, crumbling into the road. Staff came up with some pretty good solutions because I think I was here when it first happened, or I lived in Lynchburg, and I remember when they first put up the netting and trying to catch it. 12th Street's been closed for what, five months? Something like that? It's been closed. We gotta do something to stabilize this. Now, the first solution that was presented was where the money comes from. And, and they actually went through several different options to come up with a, uh, a reasonable solution as far as it cost a bunch of money. What is it, 2.4 million uh, to stabilize so that road can be opened back up so rocks aren't falling on top of heads of people driving their car down the street on 12th Street. With that, it's actually something that is going to be long term. The last time I think it's been done probably about 20 years ago. It's now being, that was a, a more of an ephemeral fix. This is going to be long term without having to add the maintenance of pulling rocks and stones that have fallen out of the, the netting. It's actually one that helps to get that road back where it can, can pass. Um, Staff first came up with a solution that took money from our general uh, reserve for contingencies. We did have lots of, uh, for a surplus, again, this last year where there are funds that were in the unassigned general fund balance. Gladly that they took the recommendation to take the money from there and it's going forward. Nobody likes to spend the money on this, but I think it's the best thing we can do for that neighborhood, for the folks that are traversing down 5th Street and up 12th Street and vice versa to get downtown. Um, we can't have this road stay shut. So thank you for coming up with a good solution, even though I'd rather give this 2.4 million back to the taxpayers, but it is absolutely necessary and glad to support it. Thank you. Um, it's a, it's an area, a major area in our community that I frequently travel. So I'm glad we have the funds to do that. But again, that's why we have tax dollars. So we can support our city, support our schools, support our staff members. That's what it's about, supporting them. So that's why we have funds, so we can do that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any more discussion? Okay, let's go ahead, go ahead and vote. Uh -oh. The motion passes 6-1. Okay. The meeting is adjourned. Our next regularly scheduled meeting will be held on November 28th at 4 p.m. in Council Chamber. <laughs> <laughs>